You probably know that the Robin Yount rookie card played second fiddle to George Brett rookie card through most of the 1980s. And you might know that Yount has dropped behind Brett again when it comes to the value of their 1975 Topps cards. But when you whip out the phrase Robin Yount rookie card, you really need to be more specific. Because by my count, there are at least eight different forms of cardboard that can fit that definition, depending on how liberal you want to get with the term. Don't believe me? Fine. Let me spell it out for you in this rundown of all the Robin Yount rookie cards from 1975. 1975 Hostess, Robin Yount, number 80. Britt beat Yount to most early career recognitions, first only to get Rookie of the Year votes, first to get MVP awards, first to get an all-star nod, but that didn't hold with rookie cards. To wit, Yount checked in at number 223 in the colorful 1975 top set, while Brett was pushed way down to number 228. Even more impressively, Yount somehow landed one of the 150 cards in the 1975 Hostess set, the company's first in five-year run. As with all the cards in this set, Yount originally appeared as part of a three-player panel that was actually baked right into the yummy yummy boxes. In this Hall of Famers case, he shared the confection limelight with Andy Mercer Smith and Al Oliver. Yount was also part of a scaled-down issue that went out as singles and individual Twinkie packages, as in they were part of the backing that held the Twinkie in place, which meant you got plenty of cards with cream grease on the back. Either way, if you wanted Yount by himself, you'd have to cut him out of the surrounding cardboard, and most of the copies you find these days are of the hand-cut variety. 1975 Hostess Panel, Andy Mercer Smith, Al Oliver, Robin Yount. Of course, you could just take Yount as he came, which meant dab smack in the middle of Mercer Smith and Oliver. It was pretty amazing company for a young lad who hadn't done much of anything in the majors. Of course, Hostess looks amazingly smart now for putting Yount front and center of this puppy. 1975 Hostess Twinkies, Robin Yount, number 80. Okay, so what I said previously about having to cut Yount out of the panel if you wanted him by himself is only partially true. It's true if you want a Hostess Yount, single style. But if you want a Yount, single style, that pretty much looks like the Hostess cards, Medulo, some dotted lines around the border, and a thick line in the middle of the back, you could opt for the Twinkies version. The Twinkies cards were issued as singles and were actually part of the packaging that separated the good sweet stuff from the wrapping. So yeah, you end up with plenty of grease-stained cards, like I also said previously. And well, you still had to cut them out if you wanted them to be baseball card size. This is a tougher card to come by than the base hostess issue, especially if top condition is the priority. 1975 Opeachy Robin Yount, number 223. This card looks just like the famous Yount rookie card that grew up with a hobby in the mid-1980s. Well, at least until you turn it on its side and see the brighter cardstock, or until you turn it over and see the block in French text, or until you study the edges and see the telltale Opeachy peach fuzz. Or until you look at the PSA population numbers and see that this is a tougher find than its top's counterpart. 1975 SSPC Robin Yount, number 238. I've always considered this to be a 1976 issue since cardbacks reference 1975 stats. But the copyright does show a 1975 date, and PSA classifies it that way. Most importantly, pegging the set in 1975 lets Yount card qualify for this list. The SSPC issue was basically a bootleg deal at the time that quickly became a hobby legend and gained a large cult following who dubbed it the pure set since it delivered big, full-color images and not much else on card fronts. In a lot of ways, SSPC was the forerunner to the clean look that helped propel Upper Deck to stardom in 1989. For his part, young Robin shows up here looking over his shoulder in the batting cage. It's right up close and personal, too, a big contrast to the telescopic shot on his Topps rookie card. 1975 Topps, Robin Yount, number 223. And speaking of that Topps rookie card, this thing spent seven or eight years just being there, lurking in the shadows of the George Brett rookie, the Gary Carter rookie, the Jim Rice rookie, the Fred Lynn rookie card. 
But Yount gave his cardboard a jolt in that 1982 American League MVP of his, and then he just kept playing at the high level. By the time he copped his second MVP in 1989, the Yount Ricky card was pretty much equal to that Brett Ricky card, and they stayed neck and neck value wise for years. And though Brent has nosed ahead slightly, these are still two great gems of the set, rookie card wise. 1975 Tops Mini, Robin Yount, number 223. In 1975, Tops decided to test collector reaction to small baseball cards, targeting markets in Michigan and on the West Coast. Why did they do this? Maybe as a nod towards the growing trend in super economy cars, like the cardboard Toyota Pup. I don't know. But I do know that by the time the hobby exploded in the early 1980s, the minis were another issue with a cult following that soon swelled into mainstream collectordom. With smaller numbers available, it seemed like everyone was chasing these shrunken but otherwise identical versions of the colorful 1975 Topps cards. And as Yount climbed the baseball hierarchy, his minis, as well as those Brett, Carter, and all the rest, turned into true pasteboard delicacies. The standard rubric during the hobby boom was that a 1975 Topps Mini was worth about twice what the same card was in the standard form would fetch. That gap is pretty much gone now, with minis even falling below the base cards in terms of value sometimes. But the minis are still exquisite little rectangles of hobby history. 1975 Topps Brewers Team Card, Del Crandall Manager, Robin Yount, number 384. Is Yount really there among the many brewers on this 1975 Topps team card? Well, yeah, or at least he appears to be right there in the middle of the third row wearing his number 19 uniform. Although it seems to be too easy to find him, like a trap. I mean, these things are usually just a blob of humanity, and you really can't tell Dick Allen from Mel Allen. But Yount's card number 223 also appears on the back of the team card, which serves as a team checklist. So for our purposes, this counts as another Yount rookie card. Score. Like our video? Then like our videos and subscribe to our channel. WaxPackGods.com